I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick, and today we're going to talk about ApoB. I've been hearing a lot about ApoB lately, and I've not really been sure where that fits in. This new expert clinical consensus from the National Lipid Association finally now gives us clear guidance. Apolipoprotein B, that is ApoB, is the main protein that's found on all atherogenic lipoproteins. It's found on LDL, but it's also found on other atherogenic lipoprotein particles. Since it's part of all atherogenic particles, it predicts cardiovascular risk more accurately than LDL cholesterol alone does. ApoB and LDL cholesterol tend to run together, but the important thing to realize is it doesn't always run together. While they're correlated fairly well on a population level, for any given individual, they can diverge. And when they do, ApoB is the better predictor of future cardiovascular outcomes. This divergence turns out occurs frequently, and it can occur even more frequently after treatment with statins. When LDL decreases to reach the LDL threshold for treatment, but ApoB levels remain elevated, there's the potential for misclassification of cardiovascular risk and essentially the risk of undertreatment of someone whose cardiovascular risk has actually remained elevated and is actually higher than it appears if we only look at their LDL cholesterol alone. That's the importance of this consensus statement. In fact, the consensus statement says, and I'm going to quote here, where there is discordance between ApoB and LDL cholesterol, the risk follows ApoB, unquote. Having this understanding then leads us to the places where measurement of ApoB may be helpful, and let me now delineate the two most important of those. In patients with borderline ASCVD risk, in whom shared decision-making was being done about whether or not to use statin therapy, and a patient prefers not to use statin therapy, and I don't think this is unusual, ApoB can be used to further carry out risk stratification. If ApoB suggests low risk, then statin therapy can be withheld. If ApoB is high, then that would favor starting statin therapy. Now, it's important to realize there are certain common conditions, such as obesity, where uh, ApoB is affected. So both obesity and insulin resistance leads to smaller cholesterol depleted LDL particles, and that results in a lower LDL cholesterol level, but often in the setting of a higher ApoB level. The elevated ApoB level in those circumstances may drive the decision to treat with a statin where otherwise you might not. The other scenario where ApoB can be helpful is in patients who are treated with a statin in whom one is deciding whether further treatment intensification is needed. If the LDL cholesterol level is to goal, and if measurement of ApoB is above its threshold, then treatment intensification may be considered. In patients not to goal, based on an elevated ApoB level, the first step would be intensification of statin therapy. After that, intensification would be the same as has already been addressed and recommended for treatment intensification in the 2022 ACC ACDP recommendations on non-statin therapy. We've previously reviewed that set of recommendations. See the link below to look at that in detail. Now, after clarifying the importance of ApoB in providing additional discrimination of cardiovascular risk, the consensus statement then clarifies the treatment thresholds or the goals of treatment for ApoB that correlate with the established LDL cholesterol treatment thresholds. So the risk category, if that is borderline to intermediate risk, this is primary prevention. The treatment threshold, what we aim for with LDL lowering is an LDL cholesterol level of 100 or below, and that correlates with an ApoB level of 90. For patients at high risk, 
That's often patients who have established disease or have multiple, multiple risk factors or who have diabetes. For high-risk patients, LDL cholesterol goal is less than 70. That correlates with an ApoB level of 70. And for very high risk patients, an LDL cholesterol level less than 55, that correlates with an ApoB level of 60. Now, let me be really clear here. The consensus statement does not say that we need to measure ApoB in all patients or that such measurement is the standard of care. It is not. It says, and here I'll again quote, at present, the use of ApoB to assess effectiveness of lipid-lowering therapies remains a matter of clinical judgment. This guideline is helpful, though, in pointing out that the patients most likely to benefit from this additional measurement include those who have hypertriglyceridemia, diabetes, visceral adiposity, insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, low HDL cholesterol levels, or very low LDL cholesterol levels. So in summary, measurement of ApoB can be helpful for further risk stratification in patients with borderline or intermediate LDL cholesterol levels, and it can be helpful in deciding upon whether further treatment intensification of lipid-lowering therapy may be warranted when the LDL threshold has been reached. Lipid management is something that we in primary care do every single day in the office. This is new information or at least clarifying information for most of us. Hopefully it's helpful. I'm interested in your thoughts on this, including how and whether you plan to use ApoB measurements. Please leave those thoughts in your comments section below. For Medscape, I'm Dr. Neil Skolnick.